In this video, I am going to introduce you to MTAB Benchmark. MTAB stands for Massive Text Embedding Benchmark. This benchmark is a massive benchmark for measuring the performance of text embedding models on diverse embedding tasks. They have their own leaderboard, which I'll be showing you shortly, and they also have a very cool paper. Just to give you a brief background on that one, this benchmark is primarily used for text embeddings. Text embeddings are vector representation of text that encode semantic information. As you might know that machines require numerical inputs to perform computations, so text embeddings are a critical component of many downstream NLP applications or natural language processing applications. Text embeddings can also be used for finding patterns in large amount of text via clustering or as inputs to text classification models or LLMs. Okay, now this MTAB benchmark includes 56 data sets across eight tasks and it currently summarizes more than 2000 results on the leaderboard. This is the leaderboard on hugging phase for MTAB. And as you can see here, total data sets now are 129. So they have increased, sorry, it was, it's not 56. And this is increasing every day. So you have to pardon me. Maybe when you log in next time, it, it might have increased. Total language it is covering is 113 and total models on this leaderboard are 157. This is the paper which I was referring to by Niklas and colleagues. Plus, if you want to read through the whole paper, you can download it from the right hand side. Also, this is multilingual. And as I mentioned earlier, if you go back here, it contains 113 different languages. So it is not just English. And they have, um, the researchers have benchmarked several multilingual models on by text mining, classification, and STS. Be it a new task, data set, metric, or leaderboard edition, you can even contribute to this project as they are very liberal. And I'll drop the link to their GitHub repo, which I just showed you on video's description. Okay, um, let me show you how you can use AWS managed service for accessing the LLMs through API, which is AWS Bedrock, and how you can use this MTAP benchmark with AWS Bedrock. The code which I'm going to use is, uh, goes the credit to this guy, and I'll drop the link of it in video's description to a very nice code, and he has made it really, really easy. I have just done some cosmetic changes so that it will, um, be relevant to my own credentials because I'm not using profile. I'm behind the using scene using STS, but it doesn't really matter. All you need to do is to clone this GitHub repo by clicking on here. And then from there, you can just uh, use your own AWS profile, which you might have set using AWS CLI credentials. Before you run it, there are a few requirements which you need to meet. So click on requirement.txt. So install MTAB by just doing M, uh, pip install MTAB and then you should have Boto3 and also install TQDM. I also had to install the setup tool on my Ubuntu server. So let me go to my Ubuntu server and quickly show you. Let me go to my terminal. As you can see, this is my terminal. I'm, I already have cloned this repo, made the changes and everything. And let me quickly show you my Ubuntu release. And it is simply an EC2 instance on AWS, so nothing fancy, so no need of GPU or anything else. So you can see I'm using 22.04 Ubuntu, the code name Jammy. Let me clear my screen. Cool. So now, in order to run this, but let me first show you the repo quickly. So these are the files which you will get when you clone this. In the results directory, you will get all the results of this. And I already have showed you the requirements.txt. Let me quickly open this run underscore mtab. So these are the tasks from this mtab benchmark. So you can uncomment any task which you want to run on your model. For this one, I'm just going with Amazon counterfactual classification. And from there, um, we will just benchmark it. And then I'm just simply calling the tasks here and um, 
all that stuff. Let me quickly show you the code so that you would understand what is happening. So if I go back to the GitHub repo here, the first thing I'm just importing few of the libraries, then they have to find a class. So whenever you will initialize this class from your main function, it is going to create a bedrock session from the bedrock client, which is bedrock runtime here. And then from there, we are using Amazon Titan embed text model from AWS Bedrock. And then you will have your model here initialized with the Bedrock client. And then from there, we are simply calling this encode function. And this encode function is calling get embedding function, which primarily all it is doing is it is converting uh, or generating the embedding with the help of this model, which we have just passed. and creating a numpy array out of it, which is a vector representation. And when we run the m, m, m tab.py, this has all the classification and stuff. Um, the author of this repo using these three tasks, but I'm just using Amazon counterfactual classification. Rest is almost the same. As I said, I have just, in my code, I just have made some changes to my profile and how I'm connecting, but you can simply use this one if you like. Okay, so this is a code. Let's go back to terminal and let's run it. Let me clear my screen. Sorry, I'll just cancel it, clear my screen, and let me run it now. So all I'm doing here is I'm calling that run underscore m tab with Python, and then I'm passing my AWS profile default. If you have any other default name, you can go with it. But I'm just using behind the scene default and then with some of the credential. And if you can see that it is using Amazon counterfactual classification task, and then uh, which is multilingual with four lines. So let's wait for it to run. While the task on this data set is running, which is Amazon counterfactual classification, let me quickly show you this. Uh, data set and some information about it. So if I go to my browser, so this is a paper which Amazon published, which lists down how they created this data set. You can even download it from here. And then um, a quick introduction of it, like what exactly it is, counterfactual statements, describe events that didn't or can't take place. They are, they're also called as CFD intro-duct reviews. We also have a very cool GitHub repo. This is the one which is Amazon Multilingual Counterfactual Data Set or AMCD. And then you can read more about it. I'll drop the link in video's description. Okay. Now, and there is also an archive one. Let me quickly show you that one too. So there you go. Let me make it a bit bigger. So you can read abstract and all that stuff here. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go back to our terminal and see what is happening there. There you go. It is still running. Let's wait for it to finish. So you can see that benchmarking is done. It took a bit of a time, but and you can see the ETA here, which is under five minutes, I would say. Anyway, so now go into the results directory. So again, just to show you, I am in this directory where I cloned that GitHub repo. Go to results and again ls. So you have this file. Let's get it. Or maybe let's do the more one. Let me clear my screen and then do the more. So there you go. It has given us that okay. The test is that it was in English, as you can see here, after all the versioning information above. And then accuracy is 0.61, which is quite low, I would say. <clears throat> and then accuracy standard error. And then all the other information which you can read through in the paper which I put it in. But all in all, the idea behind is that it is quite easy to run all of these tests easily on the model on all of the tasks. So there are a few tasks which take quite a long time. So you would need more beefy system for them. And also it depends upon the model size. If you don't have access to bedrock and if you want to test out any other model, such as uh, this one in the example, you can simply run it from your Google Colab or even from View Windows if you have access. But I have seen that installing mtab on Windows uh, really it's a pain in the back, so don't even try it out. I would say 
because there are a lot of prerequisites which you can't meet. They give you very weird errors. So that is where the problem is. Um, so I would say that this is it, guys. If you have any questions or if you're struggling to use it, let me know in the comment and I'll be happy to help out. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel.